हेलो आई एम डॉक्टर राशिद अहमद फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स ऑफ गुहाट यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इन द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ पार्टिकल फिजिक्स विद द कोर्स कोड पी एच वाई फोर फाइव टू वी आर एट द लेक्चर नंबर ट्वेल्व एंड द टॉपिक इज द स्टैंडर्ड मॉडल द स्टैंडर्ड मॉडल ऑफ द पार्टिकल फिजिक्स हैज टू पार्ट्स द फर्स्ट पार्ट इज अबाउट द मैटर कॉन्टेंट दैट इज नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्री पार्टिकल्स विच मेक द मैटर एंड द सेकेंड पार्ट इज अबाउट द फोर्सेज which these particles exert on each other in today's lecture we will be only talking about the matter content of the standard model in the standard model there are four kinds of elementary particles that are leptons quarks mediators and higgs in number leptons are 12 that is electron electron neutrino muon muon neutrino tau and tau neutrino so these are six leptons but then we have there six anti particles so in total we have 12 leptons in the standard model of the particle physics quarks are six but they come in three flavors that's make them 18 and then 18 anti quarks make them total 36 quarks and for the mediators we have since four forces that is strong nuclear force which has eight gluons as their mediators and electromagnetic force which has a one particle as it, as its mediator that is photon and then we have the weak nuclear force which has three particles as its mediators that is w plus w minus and z not i have not included the graviton over here because for the uh, gravitational force the mediator is uh, graviton but it's not experimentally yet discovered therefore i have not included it in the list and then we have Uh, another particle uh, called higgs it is recently discovered and this particle is responsible for providing masses through higgs mechanism to all other uh, elementary particles so you can see in total there are 62 elementary particles in the standard model of particle physics today's lecture i will start with the november revolution of the year 1974 in the years between 1964 and 1974 nothing big happened in the particle physics but something extra extraordinary happened in the uh, summer of uh, 1974 that's why it's named it as uh, named it as november revolution the november revolution of 1974 uh, is because of the discovery of new meson called jfsi j there are two names to it for uh, uh, j and psi and the reason is that this particle was discovered at the brookhaven by group uh, under working under cc C. ting in august 1974 but for some reasons they did not publish it and kept it hidden till the another group but unregistered group at slack discovered it independently and called it psi so then we Uh, name we gave it two names that is jfsi to uh, to um, acknowledge uh, the uh, findings from uh, uh, ting and uh, burton risher group independently now why it uh, created a revolution the reason is that j size nature true nature was unknown at that time and there was a huge debate about that what j and psi is actually made of the reason for the uh, this uh, um, lively debate about the nature of j and psi was the unusual lifetime of uh, j, j and psi particle because the uh, lifetime of usual hadrons is about 10 to the power minus 23 seconds whereas the lifetime of uh, psi particle was 10 to the power minus 20 seconds now you might say that this is not a big difference but imagine that you uh, come across some person or some village where the people have a uh, lifetime of uh, average lifetime of 70000 years so you would say that it is not some kind of anomaly but it is the sign for new kind of biology and face it at that time exactly said this and they said that this uh, difference between the lifetimes of uh, uh, usual hadrons and uh, jfsi particle is not because of the Mm, some anomaly but it is because of the new physics involved over here and in the search of this new physics uh, physicists found that actually there is another quark uh, that is called charm quark 
and this charm quark is so heavy that it makes up uh, c and uh, c bar is the anti charm quark there is new particle uh, new meson psi and this you can also find in the idea of Bro uh, broskin and glash glasho uh, who said that if we have four leptons that is electron electron neutrino muon and muon neutrino these were the four particles discovered till 1974 and in order to have symmetry they said we must also have four quarks that is down up and strange quarks were known at that time but there was a place uh, still uh, vacant for the fourth quark and the discovery of psi and uh, has uh, made a good case for having another quark uh, in order to have this symmetry between the number of particles uh, between leptons and quark uh, uh, glasho and broshen said that we should have another quark called uh, charm quark and they have actually calculated its mass and everything but since uh, this psi quark is, psi meson is made of uh, charm and anti charm so the net charm on psi is zero and we cannot see the uh, net charm over here or the bare charm over here so there was a search started to uh, uh, discover the bare charm or the naked charm and in 1975 the first evidence came for the baryons when two baryons that is lambda and sigma were discovered with one charm involved and uh, it confirmed that we have the fourth quark and the evidence for the meson that is naked or bare uh, with a bare uh, charm came in next year 1976 when we have d not and d plus with uh, one charm involving uh, in both the particles and it confirmed that we have now a new particle new quark fourth quark that is called charm quark so the uh, uh, it was uh, a welcome discovery but it did not stop there and it followed uh, the discovery of new lepton and tau was the heaviest lepton at that time and its neutrino so this list of leptons was actually extended so we had uh, electron electron neutrino muon and muon neutrino there were four leptons that's why we wanted to have four quarks as well but the discovery of uh, uh, tau that is uh, another uh, lepton uh, the heaviest uh, lepton uh, so there's the same family uh, the mass is only increasing and uh, its uh, corresponding neutrino actually destroyed the uh, symmetry again so now we have uh, down up strange charm quarks but there is a space vacant for the next quark or the fifth quark and also even for the sixth quark uh, to uh, to restore the symmetry again and what happened that uh, we got another quark discovered and that is called a bottom quark because of the particle epsilon and when epsilon was discovered people thought that it is made of the new quark that is uh, even heavier uh, bottom quark and again you see that there is uh, uh, b b bar in this epsilon meson and no naked or uh, bare uh, bottom uh, quark involved here so uh, there is uh, so the discovery is restored again in sense that uh, we have the uh, the uh, bottom quark uh, to match up the uh, leptons uh, uh, there will be another uh, quark coming uh, as well to complete uh, the full symmetry uh, uh, so people started again for the uh, search of the bare bottom and this bare bottom particle was discovered in 1981 and this was lambda so it has one uh, uh, bottom uh, quark over here uh, so it is a it is a sign of the uh, bare uh, bottomness and then the evidence for the bottom meson also came in 1981 when people discovered b not and b minus which had uh, a bare quark b involved over here this c is actually b and uh, then the last uh, particle the last quark in the list was the top quark the heaviest uh, quark to uh, completely restore this uh, symmetry between leptons and quarks so we now have six leptons and six quarks so somehow in nature we have equal number of leptons and equal number of quarks so uh, uh, this was the story for the leptons and quarks now we go towards the mediators as you know that in the strong force we have uh, uh, eight gluons 
uh, that is uh, eight gluons, eight mediators. The reason why it is eight is uh, a little bit technical, but we have eight number of gluons for the strong force. And then we have uh, one, uh, uh, as you know, one uh, gamma particles that is the uh, mediator of the electromagnetic. So this makes it nine and graviton we do not include because it is not experimentally discovered yet. But uh, for what is for the weak force? Uh, weak force is uh, involved in the beta decay and at, the, at that time it was not clear that uh, what are the uh, mediators of this weak force because uh, in uh, Yakawa's theories are big, uh, big, uh, before Yakawa theory in Fermi theory uh, it was the weak force was considered to be uh, uh, in contact put, uh, in contact force when the particles are in contact but later on uh, the complete model was given by Glashow, Weinberg and Salam uh, which uh, suggested that that there are actually three mediators w plus w minus and z naught and they were quite heavy and they predicted their masses to be you can see that 82 g jeff and uh, 92 jeff and you can uh, compare it with the mass of proton which is only 0.94 uh, jeff so you can think of these particles how heavy the uh, w particles and z particles are and in 1983 uh, uh, at CERN uh, carlos rubias group uh, discovered them experimentally and confirmed that there are three mediators uh, predicted by the uh, glashow weinberg salam model and uh, that completed the list of our mediators so now we have uh, 12 mediators uh, uh, eight for the strong force three for the weak force and one for the electromagnetic force so the standard model if uh, we go to the lepton classification so you can see here in this table now the complete summary of uh, the lepton sector where uh, we have three generations and these three generations are because of the mass of the uh, particles in the first generation we have the lightest of the leptons listed so electron and electron neutrinos are the lightest of the electrons in terms of mass that's that's why we call them a first generation uh, leptons and this is their charges electron number because electron has electron number one and neutrino also have one and muon number and tau number is zero because there are no muon and tau uh, involved but in the second list you see in the second generation we have another lepton which is heavier than the electron that is muon and its corresponding neutrino and this is uh, their uh, other numbers and in the third generation uh, the heaviest uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, leptons are the tau and tau neutrino and you can see all these uh, information about them so in this table we have listed actually uh, six uh, uh, leptons and there are corresponding six anti leptons as well uh, different uh, there is a difference between their charges but otherwise they are uh, rest of them are the same so somehow we we are having three generations of uh, leptons uh, in terms of their mass a similar kind of classification can be made for the quarks where we have first second and third generation in the first generation there are two quarks that is down and up they are the lightest of the quarks and this is their charge because they can have fractional charges and this is their downness upness strangeness charmness bottomness and topness uh, values given here and in the second generation we have s and c uh, and and the last generation we have the bottom and uh, top quarks uh, you can see over here and their rest of information given here so you have seen that uh, in the standard model of the particle physics we have uh, total number of 62 uh, fundamental or elementary particles and they are uh, classified into uh, leptons and uh, uh, quarks are classified into three generations in the next lecture lecture we will be talking about the forces uh, which these particles exert on each other with this, I thank you all.